Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about three tips for posting that'll help you connect to your target audience. When I say posts, I mean written posts, Facebook posts, I mean Facebook lives, or short lives, long lives, anything that has to do with posting. And we call that copywriting. And I know copywriting is, you know, it comes to mind is like writing, uh, you know, written stuff, which is, is true. But we do write a little outline, even if it's in our head when we do Facebook Live. So I'm going to use this opportunity to talk about the copywriting aspects of everything, but also that you can uh, apply the copywriting to your Facebook Lives as well. So this is very important. I It is a million dollar industry copywriting. Okay. That's what, you know, good business is. Uh, use it's a tool that they use to make hundreds, thousands, millions of sales, copywriting, right? So I wanted to talk about that a little bit and you know give you some bullet points today, three tips to to try to hone in on that skill so that you can use it to make more sales in your business, recruit more people on your team, uh, whichever problem you're trying to solve for yourself. I went into a coughing fit a little bit because I took I was chewing on this vitamin C thing and I like went the wrong way or something. But anyways, thank you for tuning in this Saturday. If you are here, please say hello. When there's more engagement, it's more fun. We can get more stuff done. If you have questions, I'm going to put you up on here on my phone so that I don't uh, miss any comments. Also, if uh, because I'm streaming on StreamYard, I might not see your name. So there is a link at the bottom that that lets you click on it and then that way Facebook knows who you are and will tell me who you are. Hey Philip, I see you're on popping on here. So the more engagement the better. Let's get let's you know let's get stuff done here. So three tips for posting. If you guys don't know me yet and you're new to this team, I'm Eileena or my this sorry new to this page. Um my name my name is Eileen Alvira. I'm here to inspire, motivate, educate entrepreneurs like you on how to use digital marketing skills to get your business growing online. So let's just, let's get into it. Why do we need to have this skill? First of all, it's most important because it helps your audience know, like, and trust you enough to buy your products or join your team, whichever, whichever you're trying to achieve, which goal you're trying to achieve by doing, by posting. Okay. Um, on social media. So number one, be a problem solver. Okay. So I want you to go out there. Hey, Philip. Um, I want you to really, first of all, and I talked about this in a lot of lives prior, um, how to find your target market, right? Go out to your target market and look at what the problems are that they have. And most likely you've had this problem too, or these problems, because you started your business. Most of us start our business because we were impacted by something, by a product, by a service, something like that. And you thought to yourself, you know what? I want to share this. I want to share this with the world, or at least I want to share this with my target audience, right? And so dig deep into what those problems are that your product is solving. It's really important to know that. It's important to know that you're, you know that you have a good product, first of all, if it solves a problem, even if it's one problem, okay? If it solves a problem, you have potential for a good product. Now, if you're in network marketing, the company has already thought of that. So most likely all your products are helping somebody out there. If you have your own business, your own product, you know, make sure you dig deep into that product and say, how is my product helping somebody, right? And when you get through that, find out what the problems are that they're having where my product will help them, where your product will help them and find though the answers to those problems. The answers to those problems are your product, but not necessarily, you're not necessarily going to go out there and say, Hey, this is my product. It'll solve your problem. You know, no, you're not doing that. Obviously not doing that. That doesn't work. Okay, guys. So what you're trying to do is really make, make a story like, like this is number two, but you're going to have a product. That's a problem solver. Now we're going to go into number two, use a moment in time, use a story to help explain the problem 
and the solution. So I'm not saying, hey, go, you know, go look at your whole life and see what stories you can, you know, come up and tell them all the stories and, you know, that'll help them see how your, you know, product is going to help them. No, what you really need to do is pick one moment in time because you have a lot of those one moments in time, right? Pick the one moment in time where your solution, which is most hopefully your product helped you. Okay. So for example, let's say I'm in CBD. Okay. So I've heard so many things about CBD, right? And it's supposed to help, you know, I look on the web uh, on, on, on like groups, websites on, you know, things where it tells me all these problems that people are having, even on my own, my own newsfeed, I'll see people complaining about something. Oh, I have backaches. Oh, I can't sleep. I can't, you know, and you have all of these problems, right? And you look back into your, into your life and you say, you know what? I remember, and I'm just making this up guys. Okay. I remember when I had tennis elbow and I tried everything. I would ice it all the time. I would, uh, t- I took ibuprofen. I would, you know, rub a uh, Bengay on it or something. And when you're telling your one moment in time story, you want to be very specific. Okay. Who reads novels out there? Who reads books out there? Raise your hand or give me a one. Okay. Have you ever read a really, really good novel, especially the ones that are series, like a series of uh, the same you know, different volumes of the same story, right? So, and then you feel like you're one of the characters in there or you feel like, you know, you know the characters or you're in the story, right? I felt like this when I uh, read the Harry Potter series back, back, back in the day. I remember I hated, hey, Anna, I hated to, I, I like in the, in the end, I, I didn't want to end the series because I knew it was the last book. And I didn't want to end it because I was going to miss my friends in the book. I was going to miss Harry and Hermione and Ron and Mr. Weasley and, you know, all those people, you know, and I'm like, I'm going to miss them. I don't want to end the series. So I read the last book very, very slowly just so I could prolong it, you know, so much. And this is what you're trying to do. And, you know, JK Rowling was a great, is a great writer a great novelist where she really gives you a picture in your mind as to what's happening in the story. And that's why you can put yourself in it. So this is what you want to achieve when you're using that one moment in time uh, where you were, you had a problem and you solved it. So you want to use details like, Oh my gosh, I remember I was sitting in my car and it was raining outside and I was on my way home and there was a lot of traffic. So see, I did like four different descriptions to kind of get you in my car with me. Right. And then when, and then I was trying to pick up my coffee, get, get drink a coffee and my elbow just hurt so much, you know? And so, and so you're, you're describing this pain, right? You're letting them get, get into your story. Um, and that's when you provide a solution. And then, you know, I started, tr- I tried this new thing and you, you're not going to say like, Oh, I tried this acne, something, something, CBD oil. You're like you're not doing that. <laughs> so remember, well, you know, mo- we don't want to like really push our products on people. We're not pushy, right? We're attraction. We're trying to be attraction marketers here, right? So we're just saying, I tried this new thing. Um, I used it for two weeks and it was amazing, you know? So you're doing this, but you're, you're telling this story, okay? And that's what we want to do. We want to get your people into it, okay? Number three, use a scroll stopping photo. And when I say this, it's because I'm talking about copywriting. So I'm talking, if you're talking, if you're doing a long a story post, okay. Where you're like actually writing this, this out. Many people have scrolled down their uh, news feeds and have seen a lot of written stuff and like have not stopped. Cause you're like, I cannot bother reading all this. Right. But if you put a photo out there, a scroll stopping photo. And when I say scroll stopping photo, I mean, don't put a photo there that everybody else is using. Like a stock photo is that what, that's what we call it. Go and find a photo. It could, it doesn't have to be recent. Okay. It could be something in the past and, and it just, you know, makes people stop. And most of those have you in it. 
because this is social media, guys, and you are the star of your own social media show. So they want to see you. What are you doing? Right. Or what is someone in your family doing? Right. Like make it known. OK, this is my this is my son. He's doing it. Blah, blah, blah. Right. And those are the ones that stop people from scrolling because they're unique. They are you. That's your brand. You know, whatever. It, it hits a lot of the the check boxes. Right. You know, and take a lot of photos every day. You don't have to post these photos, but you can save them for when you need it when you're doing these written posts. So you can always like look back into your photo album and say, oh, this was a cool photo. I remember this. I took this by the pool when blah, 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 blah. Right. And so save those photos because you're going to need them when you do these um, written posts so that people will stop scrolling. Okay. So those are the three things. Let's go back to them. Be a problem solver. Use a moment in time to explain the problem and solution and use a scroll stopping photo to, to stop the scroll. Show your face doing something cool, right? And those things, I really, uh, you know, I guarantee you start doing this consistently, you're going to get more and more people engaging. And why do you want that? Because I said earlier, it helps people, especially your cold market, people who you friend request, and they're just, you know, random friends on your Facebook. I know a lot of you guys do that, you know, for your business. They're not going to know who you are. So they could care less what product you're selling. They could care less what, you know, team you're trying to grow or whatever it is that you're doing in your business, right? Unless they get to know you. And this is a great tool. It's one of the top tools you can use that includes Facebook Lives to get people to connect with you. It's super important. So if you guys are not in my group yet, I'm going to do a part two of this video where I'm going to go more in depth. And the reason why I don't do it here is it's going to take too long. So it's free to get into that group. I'm going to put the link down in the comments if you want to get to part two, which I'm going to do in a few minutes here. And we're going to go deep into those three bullet points. OK, another last announcement I want to make is that I have been inundated. My business is doing great and I'm so, so busy and I can no longer do as you can see, the last two weeks have been really, really tough for me to get in on to get in here on a Friday. So I'm I'm going to lessen my posts to two trainings a week instead of three. But don't but don't fret if you join the group, you'll get the three because I'll still do an extra one in there. Okay, and those ones will be more in depth. But out here, I'm going to do two lives a week, and then you know. I might pop in here really quick during the week as well, or my stories or whatever. But as for the live trainings, I'm only going to be two, doing two, and I'm going to do Tuesdays and Thursdays. Those seem to be much easier for me than trying to get in here on a Friday. So Tuesdays and Thursday, I'm sorry, sorry, Thursday is going to be in the group. So I'm going to do Monday and Wednesdays on here. If that changes, because I might have, uh, it might change times. OK, I know 7 p.m. has been like the the sweet spot for me. Um, and I know a lot of people get to watch it more because they're at home, but I might have to do it earlier and you might have to watch on replay because I'm going to have to really get in here uh, during business hours. And so Monday and Wednesdays is what I'm pushing for on here to do the trainings and then Thursday in the group. So get into that group. It's free and you'll get the longer trainings in there. Yeah. And that's it. So I'm going to wrap it up here because I'm going to go into my group. Thank you guys for being on here. Taylor, Anna, I see Philip, and I will uh, talk to you guys again on Monday. Until then, be safe, be well, live abundantly, and I'll see you on my next video. Aloha.